Are you excited about Cyberpunk 2077's anticipated release? Well, so is the internet. Everyone is talking about it. From issues having to do with gameplay and various glitches that people have complained about. And of course you have the SJW complaint regarding representation and alleged transphobia. But let's take a look directly to Twitter <laughs> to see what the critics are saying about this game. VGC is calling it a stunning achievement if you can overlook the myriad of launch glitches. No surprise there, it is a new launch, you can expect there to be glitches. Trusted Reviews says, Cyberpunk 2077 is a triumphant RPG and a new benchmark for the genre, yet falters under its own ambition, problematic writing, and an underwhelming court narrative. PC Games says, groundbreaking, but not as you think it is. Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't surpass its influences, but claims new territory of its own. Hey, sounds good to me. Polygon says, There's nothing revolutionary on offer in Cyberpunk 2077. Instead, it's a game obsessed with the past. <laughs> okay. The Washington Post. What do you think? Guess whether this is going to be positive or negative. Here's what they have to say. Review. Cyberpunk 2077 feels like the messy and inevitable evolution of open world design. These early impressions come with many caveats. For one, the game is boiling over with glitches. Okay, everybody's taking the cheap shot at the glitches, fine. But tell me more about the story, tell me more about the world. What is it that's good, what's bad, right? Jessica L. Condit says, I have some gripes, but so far, Cyberpunk 2077 is sexy and sweet. Let's check out her review. This review comes from Engadget. And it says, Cyberpunk 2077 is worth the wait. That's all you really wanted to know, right? Well, yeah, right. <laughs> the world of Cyberpunk 2077 is dense, seductive, and dangerous. It's also large. I received a PC review code on Wednesday, December 2nd, and I've clocked nearly 20 hours of gameplay. Considering some QA testers have logged 175 hours in the game without completing it, this isn't going to be a comprehensive review. It will, however, answer a critical question. Does Cyberpunk 2077 live up to eight years of hype? Short answer, yes. <laughs> and you can check out more of her review at Engadget. Andy Robinson says, I played 50 plus hours, and as a narrative experience, Cyberpunk 2077 is undoubtedly one of the most immersive and engrossing games I've played, besting titles with far less complexity and certainly fewer script pages. However, this level of complexity naturally comes at a cost, especially at a time when the game has had to be shipped via remote working. Cyberpunk is very buggy at launch. Same complaint. Nothing game breaking and it didn't spoil my overall experience, but some might want to wait for patches. Okay, that's fair. Adi Robertson says, I played Cyberpunk 2077 and enjoyed cruising around Night City and electrocuting people with my brain. But there's nothing incredibly interesting about the game either. It's a big open world, a lot of disconnected mechanics, and a cool by numbers vibe. He calls Cyberpunk huge, ambitious, and safe. And last but not least, Tamagotchi says, I was thinking you didn't have enough Cyberpunk discourse in your life, so I wrote my own review. It's terrific in many ways, if not groundbreaking, and has a lot more heart and humanity than you may think. It is, however, incredible buggy. <laughs> this is coming from The Telegraph. Now, opposite that, you have CBR and a couple of other sites that are accusing cyberpunk of being transphobic, and in this instance, perpetuating transphobia, and they're perpetuating this narrative that gamers are calling it an act of violence. Well, as you saw before, not all critics share this view, and not all people who are actually playing the game do either, but let's take a look at this article to see their perspective. According to CBR, several trans critics have been harassed and mistreated online, creating an atmosphere of violence toward the trans community that cyberpunk developers choose to ignore. And here's the problem, what can Project Red actually do 
to stop someone in their own home from texting a nasty text or sending a nasty tweet. Absolutely nothing. They go on to say that Cyberpunk's character creation is transphobic. Why? Why is it transphobic? Here's why. For some people, their excitement turned to disbelief when they realized that their character's gender and quote unquote pronouns aren't determined by genitals, but rather by voice. So only deep voice characters can be identified as male, while higher pitched characters are identified as female. They go on to accuse the developers of treating trans critics as pariahs. Why? Well, first they begin by acknowledging that transphobia appears to be problematic to them, but it doesn't feel like a true attack. Okay, fair enough. You don't consider it an attack. So what is the attack? According to them, it's Project Red using criticisms living toward them as a means to bolster its own games, basically monetizing their haters. What do you think of this controversy? Are you excited about Cyberpunk? Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.